name is Jody Wallach. I'm the director of the Wayne Public Library. Um, I didn't know Ed very well. I met him a, a few times back when I was the children's librarian here in 2011-ish. Um, but I know he was very well loved in the community, both in the library and the community in general. Was a wonderful advocate for the library and for the citizens of Wayne. Served on the Wayne Westland Library Board and then the Wayne Public Library Board for many years until he passed away in 2018. I'm so glad we're able to have this dedication. It was originally scheduled in March of 2020, and <laughs> we obviously know how well that worked out. Um, so it's long overdue, but I'm very glad to welcome you all here tonight. And I would like to take a moment to thank the friends of the library as well, who, um, as we're preparing to dedicate this room in memory of Ed, um, generously provided the funds to replace our fireplace, <laughs> as well as to buy the of bar. <laughs> so we're going to invite a few people to come up and share some words about Ed, and then we will unveil the plaque uh, dedicating this room, and that'll be the dedication ceremony. So thank you all. And uh, Mary Lindsay, would you like to go first? Mary Lindsay is a longtime friend of Ed's. I'm very happy to be able to talk about Ed a little bit tonight. Uh, he was a very dear friend of mine, and I miss him very much. Um, he was one of the most interesting people I've ever known. I just use the word quirky when I talk to him about him to my friends, but uh, he was, uh, um, he was many things. He was a um, world traveler, a, um, uh, a very cultured man. He had a, uh, a love for classical music that was almost fanatical. <laughs> we went to a lot of concerts together. I can just tell a few stories about Ed, you know, that's without it sounding too much like a eulogy. Um, we went to a lot of uh, concerts together, and he was, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> just 275 just really got to me tonight. <laughs> um, uh, he was, I, I would say to him, you grew up in the 60s, didn't you? It was like strictly classical music for him. I said, didn't you like rock and roll? No, no. But he'd say he was open to other genres like bluegrass maybe and jazz. So a couple of times I took him to concerts for things that I liked. And three times, I think it was. And he was a good sport about it and everything, but every single time, at one point in that concert, I looked over and I would see him with his hands over his ears. And, uh, <laughs> And I would tell him, you know, I would say, what? And he'd say, it's so loud. I'd say, well, when the DSO gets going and everybody's playing, it's no louder than, than that. <laughs> but, you know, that was a lesson learned, and we just didn't uh, go to too many concerts other than classical ones after that. Uh, another thing, he was a fastidious English teacher. And uh, uh, he, he was just really dedicated to being a good English teacher. We would be out riding around in a car and almost unfailingly he would come across a sign or an ad with a misspelled word <laughs> or something just plain bad grammar. And it would it would at the same time would thrill and enrage him. He would be both um he think it's hilarious and deeply he would be deeply uh and profoundly depressed by it. And he would talk about the state of education for kids in the, today. But um, he, he just loved looking for those signs, and that was just one thing that uh, I liked about uh, him. He's just he was uh, quirky. Uh, I told him one time that I had trouble, I was never very good at diagramming sentences when I was in, in school, and for that comment I got a whole lesson <laughs> on diagramming sentences, complete with diagrams of sentences and everything. That was a magical day. <laughs> um, he was really an avid reader, had a really impressive collection of books. 
And even now I'll open a book at home and there'll be his name written on the fly leaf. It was something that he had <coughs> he thought I might like. And um, we used to like to go to um, uh, little independent bookstores and used bookstores. And he, uh, he would be looking through things and he'd pick up a book and open it up and there'd be his name on the fly leaf. He'd read it and donated it years ago, but that never stopped him from buying it again. <laughs> <laughs> but of all his passions and interests, he was most zealous about this library. Um, from the conception of it to its location, to its the design, programs, the staff, the books, everything. It was his greatest obsession. It was a really great source of pride for him. And he had very fervent ideas on all phases of its realization, as probably some of you remember. And if I may quote the Dowager Countess of Grantham from uh, <laughs> Downton Abbey, wars had been waged with less fervor. <laughs> so he was so proud of this library and what it meant to the community. When he would have friends or family from his home state of Ohio come to visit, he wouldn't take them to Greenfield Village, he'd bring them to the library, <laughs> my library, he would call it. It was like the child he never had, his progeny almost. And in the face of people using computers more and more, uh, I used to wonder to him, you know, what's the future of a library? But he was very passionate in that, and, and there were a lot of, there was a multitude of people that were with him in that. Since I met him, I've never known so many librarians in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's right and it's good that this reading room is being dedicated to him. And I'm, uh, he was a lot of things. Lover of classical music, resolute English teacher, but I think his most cherished role to him, to him was that of a librarian. And I know that He's looking down from his big, comfy reading chair mm -hmm. and smiling at us tonight. Mm -hmm. So that's it for him. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing those <laughs> memories. Um, Lois, a chance to tell Could you like to share some words? Yes. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I have to take my mask off or you'll never hear a word I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I first came to the City of Wayne in 1995, and um, the first City Council meeting that I went to, I was going to be introduced as the new li library director for the Wayne Westland branch of the uh, Wayne County Library. And as I'm sitting there with the person who was um, my boss at the time, to our surprise, Tom Kelly made a motion to found the Wayne Public Library and set it up as, a, as its own entity and somebody seconded, I don't remember who that was, they voted and there we were. And I looked at Mr. Whitaker and he looked at me and I said, I don't know, but here we go. And Ed was in the audience at that time and I, he was um, instrumental in working with Tom Kelly to have this done. So I think we never would have had a library without Ed and without Tom Kelly and I'm so sad that Bridget can't be here tonight with us, but I know she's here in, in spirit because they were certainly the um, movers and the shakers behind the, the development and keeping it going. Ed was on the Wayne Westland Library Board for when the two libraries were joined, or the two communities were joined in one library, and then when they each founded their own library system, he and took the rest of the library board and they became the Wayne Library Board. and was then went their own way. And Ed worked tirelessly for the, he was really the person who uh, worked mostly with the architects and the designers, I think, but more so, I was, that was before I even really got here when they were already starting to work on it. And um, uh, he followed through on every single aspect of its, of its building and of it becoming a viable part of the library that was very important to him. He, he was a librarian, a middle school librarian, I think, for most of the, the time. But this was like his, his home away from home. He, he loved it here. And after I retired, um, I didn't see Ed as much, 
but um, when it became time to, to try to um, have a millage passed to be able to run the library, Ed was right there and right on top of it and joined right in and, and I think he's one who kept it going. And I was so sad that he didn't live long enough to actually see that it, he died just before it, it uh, passed. But he was, I'm sure, there in spirit with us. So it's really fitting that we're, we're dedicating this, um, we should be dedicating the whole building to him actually, because <laughs> this, was, this was his baby and, and he um, deserves every bit of credit for it. In addition to being the former library director, Lois is the current president of the uh, library board. And Nancy Chasen, uh, if you'd be willing to join us. And I know Nancy was on the library board of the Wayne Westland Library and the Wayne Library with Ed for many years. Yeah. Well, I think it's great that we're doing or dedicating this room for him. Back in the day, it was in the 80s, um, Ed decided he was going to get me on the board, scary as it was. And we had um, a number of people from Westland, and there were a number of people from here. Unfortunately, my house and his house were in his walking <laughs> square. <laughs> so every day, he'd stop by and say, no, everything's set, you ready? You know? i say, yep, yep, yep. And I got onto the board, and Ed was a golden man. I mean, he just, he kept me in the loop. He made me say, see things the way that a librarian was. I was a teacher. And there's a difference, totally. Um, when we decided that we were going to have the new building, 24-7, um, who was on it? He'd call meetings, and Don Tom lived next door to me, who was also on the board at the time. And he would stop by and get Don and come to my house, so the three of us were talking about what was going to happen at the library. And it's been so sad not to have him around, because you don't have that spirit like you had back then. Um, we work hard to make sure everything gets done, and I'm with Lois with the millage. I was so sad that he wasn't here to see it come to fruition because he did. He worked hard, mm -hmm. really did. So he was a great man. We we all miss him. Thank you. See, um, thank everyone for you know, sharing some more memories and history of Ed and this library, which are just intertwined forever. I think. And now if any of the, the friends of the library would like to uh, come help unveil the plaque dedicating the reading room, it's right on this side, so it'll be very visible when you come in. So don't be shy, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> so Bridget Kelly's son Patrick will do the honors of unveiling the, uh, the plaque dedicating this room in memory of Ed. Thanks. <laughs> Let's let everyone get into position. Oh, no, All right. Ready to go. Would you read it? Sure. Uh, this room is dedicated to Edward D. Marmon, 1940 to 2018 an educator, librarian, and patron of the arts whose value of all things cultural was demonstrated in his love for this library and his conviction of its importance to the citizens of Wayne. That pretty well sums it up. assembled over here in what is actually now the Children's Library uh, to break ground for the new library building. And since then, this, this site has been crawling with, with um, graders, backhoes, cranes, cement trucks, masons, electricians, carpenters, and countless other machinery and people. He's lost as these machines 
constructed the building and watched it go up from footers to the walls. And as it slowly came to life with heat and water and light, and as trucks brought in the collection and the furniture, and as the final touches were applied. But the building still remained just a 24,000 square foot warehouse of books. And until five minutes till 10 on May 20th, when our director unlocked the doors, and people were actually out there uh, until they walked in. This building became a library when the people came in. 